Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. Back at the end of June, I, I uh, uploaded this video called Unprecedented Jet Stream Crosses the Equator. And this video uh, went viral, um, 412,000 views now. Um, you know, it hit a nerve um, and it was attacked viciously in the mainstream media. For example, the Washington Post um, said it was utter nonsense. So this particular video is a vindication of this video and the three videos that I did supporting this work and the blogs that I did saying that this supporting this work. The only thing I had um, was that this particular crossing of the jet stream wasn't the one that was unprecedented. The one in crossing the jet, crossing the equator in February and March, most of the end of February, was unprecedented, caused an unprecedented change in the QBO, the quasi biennial oscillation, which are winds that go east um, in the stratosphere um, over the tropics, the equator, for about 28 months, 29 months, and then they switch and they go west for 29 months, and then they switch back. And they act like a clock, and they've been consistently doing this for 60 years. But the, the February crossing, February 2016 crossing, disrupted those. And um, I will show, talk about some of the details here. So, first of all, in this particular video, I showed this image here. I talked about some of the work that was being done done and I showed this image. Um, this isn't such a good one. Let me get a clearer one. Okay, here we go. So in about February, March of 2016, the disruption occurred and instead of going around in a circle, this thing started caving into the center. I won't talk about the details, but this is showing that there is a strong disruption of the, uh, of the particular pattern. Should be clearer now. Okay, so, um, and uh, if I go back a little bit in this video that went viral, this image shows the, uh, the shows, it shows, this is a Julian day. So beginning of the year, this is about March, 90 days into the year. So, Feb so February, March was when the jet stream was crossing the equator. And then we had a diving off of the, the QBO. So we had this huge zonal wind anomaly at the equator up in the stratosphere. So what I did to defend the video that went viral is I put out this, this video, more evidence on equatorial cro crossing of the jet streams. Now, if I go back to here and just play a little bit of it, You can see what I, I was talking about, the particular event that disrupted the QBO. This is um, February 29th. And what is going on here? This looks very complex, but, you know, there's cer it certainly doesn't look like we have an independent operation of the two hemispheres, the, the, the high altitude winds in the two hemispheres. Here we get the ridge from the southern hemisphere, and we get a trough, we get basically the trough of the jet stream in the northern hemisphere and part of it breaks off and follows the ridge all the way into the southern hemisphere. Very strong interaction here. In fact, the winds here are, I believe, uh, you know, over 100 kilometers, 120 kilometers an hour or so. Okay, so I go on for the rest of this video. Um, Actually, about half of the video is actually talking about this particular jet stream crossing, which was then, then appeared in the paper talking about how this particular event was the trigger to break the quasi-biennial oscillation clock. So if you go to Earth Null School and you put in the, you, you change, you can change and go back a day, go forward a day, or back three hours, go forward three hours, um, and then what you can do is change the date up here in the URL, you know, just enter it and it'll take you to February. Um, 
you know, you can put in the February date. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing the interactions. Um, you know, this is February 27th, go forward a day, go forward another day. You know, you can see how the changes are occurring. And I think they're actually strongest if I go back to the 25th, three, four, back to the 25th, 24th. Okay, so you can see um, how this whole um, phenomena, how, how, how this whole interaction is going on. You get tremendous interaction between the jets in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. So what did this actually do? Well, Robert Scribbler just wrote a blog um, talking about giant gravity waves, okay, these are the Rosby waves, the jet stream waves, he calls them, I don't really call them that, but he does, smashed key atmospheric clock during winter of 2016, possible climate change link. Um, he quoted some of the scientists um, saying, you know, that did this paper on the QBO, the recent disruption was not predicted, not even one month ahead of time. The unexpected disruption switches the cycling of the QBO forever because it basically reset the clock. It changed that, normally it's a 28, 29 month cycle and it just broke it, it reset the clock. Um, now, the, the, uh, the jet streams, the height of the jet streams varies from about 16, 17 kilometers at the equator to about seven, eight kilometers at the poles. So at the equator where we're talking about, it's 16 kilometers, so going up to um, 50 kilometers is the, is the stratosphere, roughly. And um, the, so the QBO, um, I'll, I'll explain what it does in, in a minute, but the, the, the jet streams are thus crossing the equator at about that 16, 17 kilometer. They're interfering with the the, the the equatorial flows, which are we discussed with the QBO parameter, they cause the disruption to occur, they reset the clock. The QBO has been a steady clock for 60 years, so this is the first time that the jet streams have crossed the equator and disrupted that clock. So that is really a very powerful vindication that this crossing of the jet stream um, is unprecedented, at least in the last 60 years. Um, so this is back, this is a, uh, an image of the February um, jet streams and the crossing. Um, and there, there's, uh, it does affect the winter climate of Northern Europe. Many meteorologists use this cl clock to actually do some of their forecasts. So it messes those up. It causes a mixing of the Northern and Southern hemisphere. And what's interesting is if you go down here, um, and look at the origins of what causes the QBO. This hasn't been published, I don't think, but the, 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 the lunar cycle is 27.212 days. So how does a 28 month period come about? Well, if you take the beating with the solar seasonal cycle, which is an 11 year cycle, um, sunspots on the sun, then you get a pulse every 2.369 years or about 28 months. So this seems to be what's happening um, and now because the jet streams from the Northern Hemisphere are changing, bringing momentum down to these equatorial um, winds, they've disrupted this clock. Um, and there's no mention of, um, there's no mention in here of, um, of, any, of any of my videos or any of my work. I'm not sure, you know, a big oversight by, by Robert Scribbler. I'm sure it was, you know, I'm not sure why. Um, but anyway, in the comments, um, is this the same issue that you and Beckwith got called out for by the, by the post? Yes, it's exactly the same issue. Um, there is a lack of understanding with respect to these jet stream patterns. So this is why we got backlash. We won't, you won't find a simple derivation of the 28 month period. Um, it emerges from climate simulations. What does that mean? You know, it's like too vague, fuzzy. Um, you know, a, a period that Consistent should be solvable from basic physics. I agree that with that. Okay, um, so let's have a look at the actual paper here. Um, this came out in the by the, the, the physics.org. Uh, 
Unprecedented atmospheric behavior disrupts one of Earth's most regular climate cycles. So they actually, you know, <laughs> they actually, they should have a, a, a footnote here and say, you know, from, from uh, Beckwith's uh, viral video. Um, <laughs> although I was talking about the crossing um, a few months later, not the, not, I didn't mention the February crossing in my original video. I did in my subsequent defense video vindicating my, my uh, work. So, um, so they talk about the QBO being one of the most regular cycles, like a clock, um, helps forecasters do weather in Northern Europe and so on. And, you know, they have their quotes about the behavior and so on. Um, and this is the actual... Uh, pa paper. Oh, well, this is a, a, an article also in phys.org talking about the link between the solar cycle and winter weather. And this is the paper um, that was just published recently. So September 8th, an unexpected um, disruption of the atmospheric quasi-biennial oscillation. I don't know why they didn't put unprecedented. They probably put that there first and the reviewers took it out would be my guess. So what do they show? They said the primary cause was waves transporting momentum from the Northern Hemisphere. So the jet stream waves from the Northern Hemisphere caused the disruption. And I'll, I'll just show some diagrams here. So this shows the QBO um, behavior. So the yellow is, they call them eastward waves. Now eastward is the same thing as westerly. And westward, is the same thing as easterly. When you say westerly, it's from the west. When you say westward, it's to the west. It's a bit confusing, but the point is, is these waves, they're positive, they're going this way. They're negative, they're going this way. Okay, so this way is from west to east, or it's eastward. So this is the eastward waves. This is um, at the bottom, this is about 16 kilometers here to 32 kilometer. So this is the tropopause, this is where the troposphere meets the stratosphere. This is where the jet streams, when they cross the equator, they're about this sort of height on all of these plots. So this is 1988 roughly to now, and you can see the pattern. You're going, you're going uh, this way, and you're propagating down through time to lower and lower altitudes. Um, and uh, this is pretty continuous, and look what happens here. Okay, so this is the unprecedented event here. Instead of the waves continuing to propagate down, they, they, they stayed at that, um, at that elevation or altitude, and they continued out in time. So the behavior was quite different here. And then this will come down. So you can see this regular clock is now reset, because instead of having this whole thing, the, 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 um, the, the westward waves or the easterly waves here, blue being here, you've broken the cycle. You're going to get a yellow coming down here, and the cycle's changed um, forever. Now, how rare is this? Well, if you compare what happened, the statistics of the, the curve of the different altitude, um, the closest match is um, has a very six, uh, almost a six and a half to seven meter per second difference. Um, in February and in March, it's actually much higher. And all of the other curves over the 60 years, I believe, are the differences that are shown here. So we're way outside. This is why we're calling it an unprecedented event. So this shows you more detail on the um, curve. So we've just taken this sort of curve here and we've expanded out the scale. And this is what we get here. So what you can see is you can follow the 2016 January to April to, um, to, to uh, July, I guess. And you can see, you know, what's happening. You know, you can, follow, you can make a projection out even further. Um, and, you know, the, the cycle has been disrupted. And finally, you know, what was the previously um, most um, unusual event? Um, you can look at this event here, and you can see a lot of stuff is going on here. And these are the root, these are the differences in meters to second meters per second to previous events. So three, four point eight, five point six. And if you recall from here, um, you know we're talking about ten here. 
10 to 10 and a half, six and a half to seven, way, and these are the 